Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld uh, with a digital rebar tutorial. Uh, in this case, I want to show some special integration we've done with Ansible and Contexts. Um, the work I've done has been surfacing in our multi-site manager demo. Let me show you that. Um, this is a, a basically a lab that uh, Racken uses to demonstrate some advanced feature sets. Um, so if you want, check that out. Um, it, <laughs> there are no promises is going to work for you, but this is where, where the team sort of plays and collaborates on wiring together some really advanced features, um, including the one I'm about to show you, which is surfaced in here. Um, and the point of this demo is that we're going to show a integration using Ansible playbooks to create a machine in a cloud provider, Linode in this case, and then use Ansible to SSH to that machine to run the join up script that then will join it into the digital rebar infrastructure uh, so I can manage it using digital rebar and then I'll destroy it using this, um, using Ansible to remove things. So I'm, I'm fully leveraging Ansible as a cloud interface engine. We can do the same thing with Terraform and do Ansible in some ways has a little bit nicer, more robust interface system um, based on, on the way we're building it. In context, these are just running from the DRP server. I have some graphs and swim lanes that'll show that. And then uh, we do destroy it and, and pull things down using Ansible also. And so there's a whole bunch of pieces and parts. If you've um, seen, we have some stack scripts that do these things. So in the past, I've relied on DRP node, which runs a join. Um, but the problem is that is Linode specific. So if you don't have a stack script, you must use it or if my staff stack script breaks, um, then you're up the creek. So we've created an external dependency on provisioning operations, which I find to be abhorrent. Uh, we really want to have systems that are fully source controlled and integrated into the system. So an external dependency on a cloud provider like that um, is fragile. So here's what we do. Uh, and by the way, there's a video, there's a Raspberry uh, Edge Lab video showing a swim lanes also on how Edge Lab works. Check that out, cross promotion, cool. Uh, the idea here is that uh, we have three infrastructures uh, in our swim lanes that we're worried about. One is our digital rebar endpoint. The next one is the API in Linode, and then ultimately the server that we're spinning up itself. And so from that perspective, what we do is we're going to create a machine. I'm going to walk you through that process. I'm going to do it with a runner and then start this workflow. The workflow is going to start a, a runner context. I want to be very specific. So we're going to be running without having a machine attached, virtual or physical. We're just going to run it as a context, which means in a container on the digital rebar endpoint. But that allows us to start a workflow. That workflow immediately starts an Ansible container. And in that Ansible container, we generate some SSH keys, which we're gonna need for the machine, public and private, so that we can attach to it with Ansible, uh, and store those in the machine object. Then we're going to run an Ansible playbook that creates the instance on Linode's infrastructure. So Linode is going to then create the machine for us. We're gonna get the information back about that, store that in digital rebar, um, both the machine object itself that is comes out of Ansible and the IP address, because we need that. And then we have another task in the system, um, actually a formalized stage that does a join up using Ansible. And so it will run an Ansible playbook that joins up the system and then uses the join up script in, uh, to attach the server into digital rebar provision. So in this case, it's gonna start the discover task, do the inventory, install our agent, and then be ready for downstream operations, whatever those would be. It's just at this point a normal machine workflow system. Pretty straightforward from that uh, and super exciting. So let me show you what we've got. In this case, so this is my environment that I built. I have this one uh, Terraform brought up machine. I, I just left it in the background. And this is actually a new feature. If you haven't seen it, this is the bootstrapped uh, machine. So we're actually creating a agent baked into the server that allows us to then bootstrap operations. The, pipe, the Edge Lab has this. Super uh, recommend you checking that out. I'm just going to lock it in this case so I don't accidentally do anything against it. And what I need here is to create a machine. 
So let me go ahead and do that. So here is the uh, command line prompt I've already attached to this endpoint. And I just have to say DRP uh, machines create, and uh, we're gonna name this something clever. Perfect. And then we're going to, uh, we need to give it some metadata to start the runner. So because this machine is just a model, it doesn't have a runner. There's, right, you need a thing to have the runner. So to do that, I need to put some uh, metadata in called base context, uh, base context. See, I gotta spell better. Base context, and I'm gonna give it the runner context. I'll show you where these things come from. That is enough to get this thing started. Um, and it's going to, when I do this, it will immediately error out because I'm going to create a machine. I'm going to start a runner for that machine uh, in a container. And then it's going to go through discovery. The discovery here takes steps that only work in Linode. And so it will fail um, when we start. So I'm going to show you this. The machine will get created. Boom. Over here, now I have a machine. That machine is running and it's already too fast for me. It, it, here's the machine we created, something clever. It went to Linode Discover, which included Firewall D, which doesn't work in that container. If I just switch this over to the regular base, Discover base workflow, we'll see, whoops, and then tell it to run because it had aired. It went straight through the normal uh, Discover base. So if I had told it to start in the workflow Discover base instead of the uh, default workflow, it would have just gone through and gotten green checkboxes. The, the runner, the context that we're using here, we have a couple. Um, this is the runner context, which is really just the agent, DRP CLI agent running in a container. And then I have the Ansible one, which we build um, to run Ansible playbooks. And we have one for Terraform, uh, same, same. So here, what I wanna do is go into this new machine that I created. I wanna pick my Ansible Linode create. Let me show you in this cluster, I don't have any, I have the global manager and central. I don't have my something clever VM yet. And I'm gonna go in and start that process. What's happening now is it switched over to use the Ansible container. So we now have, it's now running in a container with Ansible. So the context switched containers. Uh, we're running this workflow Ansible Linode create, which I will show you what that looks like. So that is going to do this create, clear the context, if I drill into the Ansible Linode create, it basically switches to the Ansible context, creates my key, just like I showed you, it applies Ansible. So this has a special template for Linode that is specific to the cloud, it has to be. And then Ansible join is generic, so it could run on any, any cloud infrastructure. I'm checking in to see where we're, where we're going. Let's see how this is, looks as a playbook. And you can see classic, uh, signs of what's going on. So it went through, created the Linode, it wrote the output address so we can pick it up, it outputs the playbook data, I'll show you those, and now it's just waiting for the machine to come up in Linode. Over here, the machine is now in my list, and you can see it just preserved the name straight up. And uh, that's looking really good. It finished, uh, the machine is, is up from an SSH perspective and it, it's writing a whole bunch of data. I'm gonna show you where that goes. So over here, we're now, we already went through the Ansible join and we are done. Uh, so by just starting this workflow in this, in this machine, we literally went straight through. I can come back over here and start straight in this Ansible Linode create context. And so if I wanna do, instead of something clever, We're going to call it just go. I'm going to give it a workflow of Ansible Linode create in this case. In this Now I don't have to go through any of those steps. When I hit go here, that machine is going to immediately work in this process. Um, so just go in and it jumps straight to Ansible Linode create. It's going through the apply process and boom, I'm going to get a machine in digital rebar, no external stuff, API create, go all the way through. Um, machine now exists in the cloud infrastructure. The workflow is going to end when it's ready to run. Um, and so you can see just go has already been created. Um, wow, so super simple. I can take digital rebar and I could front any cloud infrastructure 
any infrastructure I could talk to with Ansible, I can front like this. Uh, it doesn't have to be a machine. These playbooks are generic. And so if I went through into um, the Linode component here, I could show you there's a template, Ansible uh, Linode provision. And this is a playbook, right? Looks like just a playbook running on localhost because I'm running it from digital rebar provision, putting in all the data I need to make the Linode v4 api work so i'm putting in my key the authorized keys the key i built tag info so it shows up nicely and then i have these digital rebar patterns that are going to take the output address and capture the output address from that linode instance takes the whole output from the linode instance and then waits for it so this is just a generic template i could take this template use it um, for Linode, I could take this, you know, I could make a copy of this and then stuff in an Amazon, Google, Microsoft, VMware, you name it, easy enough to, to copy this. And there's a generic runner, and these things will make it back into the, the core task library at some point after we finish getting a little bit more mileage and testing on them. Uh, but there is just a task in here that called Ansible Apply that, has, that, that implements this pattern, generates the keys, sends the, the playbook, builds the, the playbooks, and then starts the runner and then captures the data back. Uh, the join up is a little bit more prescriptive in that it builds a playbook right there on the spot that only does the join up scripts because uh, it has more specific behavior um, in how it has to exit um, from this task. So it's not, it's not the same, it's not the same thing because it's doing the, the join up script and that's special. Uh, and so you've seen these now have basically gone through the process and they're, they're, there's an agent running on the remote systems. So I now have control. I can do it whatever I need to do from that perspective. Whew, that was fast. The, now if I want to clean these up, all I have to do to clean them up is come through. I can take Linode Destroy, which is exactly the same as Linode Create, except it just uh, flips the one state value for Ansible. Oh, and by the way, these are item potent. So uh, Ansible is smart enough to know when you look at it what, what's going on. Um, just like with Terraform, we store the state file. Ansible seems to be able to inspect the cloud and figure out if it doesn't create machines over and over again if they have the same name, which is nice. Uh, but if I want to come in and I say Ansible uh, Linode Destroy, since the runner's running, it immediately comes in. It pulls the runner back into a context running on the endpoint and is now running the destroy operation, which I can look at and doing exactly the same, exactly the same type of thing. Um, what I should point out, yay, what I should point out here is, oh, and I'll show you, um, oop, nah, it's already gone. The idea here is that if I go into just go, um, this is the output that I got from Ansible from Linode. So we stored it as a parameter. And what's fun here is that because of the way we built the Ansible apply, you can chain things together. So all of this data is available, all of it, the whole machine uh, JSON is available inside of the Ansible playbook. So I can read any data that I have in digital rebar in the model in the object in the machine model in my playbook and take actions on it and then downstream from here I actually now have access to everything that Ansible learned about the machine when it came up so I can come back and then build a downstream workflow for cloud automation that learns things from this uh, JSON blob so if I needed to figure out my transfer quota I could actually look it up straight out of digital rebar data now um, and of course, I have my keys and, and things like that. Uh, so super powerful uh, integrations. And you know, you could take this and then chain together Ansible's. You could mix Ansible and Terraforms. You could, you know, of course, Ansible and Digital Rebar Provision, where you do enough to build the system up and then hand it off and do the normal infrastructure as code workflow provisioning that we've been perfecting. Um, and the fun, fun, fun thing to me for this is that if I'm building workflow logic and I want to test, say, my Kubernetes or K3S deployment, I now have just created a way I completely from a command line, build it, go, test it, run it, everything's awesome with the cloud, and then I can go through a whole bunch of cycles um, in virtual infrastructure very quickly, and then that layer should be able to be dropped directly into a physical infrastructure. So this is a great development process if I'm looking, you know, no matter what we're doing, it's all portable based on the way 
we've built the infrastructure as code uh, libraries and uh, integrations. Do a little cleanup, destroy this one too. And uh, this is looking really good. Oh, and by the way, if I wanted to, I could come back and it's all, there's always so much extra stuff. And then I can just run the process again. Notice that I, the IP address has been pulled out and so it's gonna go through the process um, again, probably you'll get a whole new machine, maybe a whole new IP address. Um, keep cycling this stuff back and forth. I hope this was helpful. Um, please, please let us know what you think. Uh, this is, you know, really powerful capabilities coming out of the contexts that were shipped in 4.1, and then we keep refining them and adding more more feature set. Um, so, once again, uh, rackend.com. Hit us up on Slack, email, however you need. Um, Tell us what you think about this. Uh, we are very excited about this capability. It's, it's really differentiated, um, multi-control plane feature set, and we'd love to hear more about what you're thinking on how to use it. Thank you.